Hi YouTube. I want to do a video about silver and gold and the missing link, um, especially as it pertains to gold, uh, but silver certainly as well. You know, people ask me a lot, uh, should I buy silver or gold? And my answer is, uh, yes, you should buy silver and gold. I mean, I believe strongly in both metals. Obviously, when uh, you know a silver is available to everyone at a, a very reasonable cost, I mean, you can buy a mercury dime for just a couple of bucks. And, uh, you know, with gold, I, I, you simply can't ignore the fact that the governments of uh, China, Russia, and India are buying everything that they can, you know, and that's by design. We, we, we've all discussed this, but there's a lot of things around, uh, around gold that, that smell, okay? Obviously, Germany trying to get their gold back, and, and the rate that it's going is, uh, you know, glacially slow, okay? And the, and the fact that... Uh, you know, Germany had some old bars in there and they're getting new bars back. It's kind of a, you know, it, it, there's something that smells there, okay? And and you can't help but wonder at some point, you know, this will kind of all blow up. Maybe it won't, but you just can't, it, it, things can't keep going the way that they are without something coming to light with the gold market. So I'm a big believer in gold as well. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm loving buying these coins at Spot. It's beyond a no-brainer to me. I love these. You know, when you... When you think about fractional gold and you realize that if the price ever does, if, if gold ever reaches its price discovery like we think it will, you know, uh, fractional gold is going to sell for a premium because people won't be able to afford a full ounce. I mean, it's trouble. It's hard now buying a full ounce of gold. And uh, so I think you're going to see price appreciation or, or premium appreciation rather on the fractional gold coins. And when you think that like when you buy a one tenth ounce now, you have to pay quite a premium. The fact that I can get these for spot, again, it just enters no-brainer territory. The question will be when I have to pay full retail, is that what I'm going to do? Well, you know, I'm getting kind of spoiled. I'm getting kind of spoiled by eBay subsidizing my purchases. So who knows? We'll, we'll see what happens. But, you know, I'm going to milk this cow as long as it's there. You know, um, as long as they want to subsidize my purchases. You know, people are, are using those eBay bucks for sports tickets and iPhones and everything else, and they're saving money on that. Hey, good for them. This is what I'm buying right here. So. You know, it's funny. I was thinking about the other day. When does a child first realize that gold has value? You know, when does that light come on? You know, and... Uh, you know, is it, the, is it when their aunt brings them uh, those chocolate gold coins? You know, is it, uh, is it when they see uh, tales of pirates and, and pirate treasure? You know, or is it uh, when they play a video game and, uh, you know, you have to get gold coins, whether even, you know, even Mario, if you remember back in the day, was oh, everything was gold coins. At what point does a child recognize that gold is different? It's pretty early on. Then you think about uh, all the movies that, uh, you know, where, where they're searching for treasure. You know, it's always treasure with, with kid movies. You know, you don't see kids searching for cash. They're searching for treasure. That's the romantic piece of uh, precious metals is treasure. And, uh, you know, think about The Hobbit with, uh, with Smog's Horde, right? Um, think about the Goonies, you know, when they tried to find... Uh, Willie's, One-Eyed Willie's uh, treasure. That was what I grew up with. So basically, you, you don't know it has value. You know it's different. And even as adults, when does an adult think, now a, an adult non-precious metals investor, when do they think about the price of gold? Typically when they go shopping for jewelry, right? You're looking for a necklace for your wife or a ring, and you get that sticker shock. Wow, this is different than uh, 10 years ago when I bought a ring. Or... Uh, or a necklace. Gold's gotten expensive. You know? It's in the vernacular. Right? How many expressions do we have about gold? When something is a tremendous value, it's worth its weight in gold. Right? The gold standard. The gold standard isn't just our old monetary system. It's actually the mark of excellence. The gold standard. The best of the best as good as gold, as good as it gets. The pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, something wonderful waiting for you. Go for the gold. Go and get the best of the best. It's all there. It's in our vernacular. P 
People realize that the price of gold has gone up when they go to buy jewelry. And yet there's this missing link. It never occurs to them to buy it. And the question is, why? It's bizarre to me. And I, and I can only speak to my own experience, obviously. I, I can't speak for everyone. And uh, I, I know that before I, I started buying metals, it, it just... It was it was a it was flatline forever, and it just seemed like uh, it sh a light bulb should have gone off in my head that that means it's a it's you know time to buy, but it didn't. Okay, I was caught up in paper investments, only. And uh, you know, I, sure I'd like to go back, but here I am now. But there's that missing link that I should buy this because it, it has been going up and it will probably continue to go up. You know, I think uh, the general news is hidden from people pretty well about the, the gold buying that China is doing and the gold buying that India is doing and the gold buying that Russia is doing. I, I think that's hidden from the public pretty well. You don't really hear that much in, on the news. And unfortunately, uh, you know, Peter Schiff is probably the only really prominent guy that you see going on CNBC. And they always do that Brady Bunch, you know, uh, four squares. And it's Peter and three guys just hammering on him the whole time, you know, generally. I mean, that's just how it works. And, and so it, it just makes him, I mean, they basically laugh him off. And, and he almost looks discredited when he's on there. And he's making great points. And people just simply don't listen. It's a real shame. But there's that missing link of actually buying it. And you know what's funny is it's really an American thing. You know, I work with people from all over the world. I mean, I, and I work for, with people certainly from India. And every now and then, you know, I'll, I'll just bring it up, like kind of in passing. Like, you know, when, when you buy gold coins, what do you buy? And they light up like a Christmas tree. They light up like, you know, like an American will when you mention LeBron James or, uh, you know, their Tom Brady or their favorite sports star. They, they love that gold. It's not, it's not like a um, stereotype. They love their gold. You know, um, when you when you talk to somebody that's uh, from Europe, they understand the value of gold. I remember um, a Mark Dice video where, you know, he was trying to do the, uh, I think it was silver actually, he was trying to give away for a dollar, and it was a European that bought it. Now, understand, the Mark Dice videos, who knows how edited they are and everything else, fine, whatever. But it was ironic that it was somebody from another country that recognized the value of it before the Americans. You know, I, I, one, of the, one of the things about precious metals that I do love is I love the forced savings aspect of it. I, that is fantastic. And it got me thinking, when you think about the wealth of the people in this country, how much of it is built up through payroll deductions? Okay, if you think about like an employee stock purchase program, okay, a lot of people have an ESPP at work. Okay, and how many people are signed up for that? I think quite a few. I, I, it's, it's very convenient. You know, I, I'm at work and, and my employer offers stock and maybe sometimes there's even a little incentive. At, it used to be really good, but they, start, they passed some laws about uh, stock options and it actually affected the employee stock purchase program of a lot of places. So they, they, um, they cut back the benefits of doing that. But a lot of people do contribute to company stock. A lot of people obviously give to their 401k. I wonder how many people are actually doing their monthly budget and taking money out of that and sending it into their brokerage account, you know, versus um, versus the employer, uh, you know, um, <laughs> the uh, oh, for God's sakes, when the the uh, <laughs> when the employer takes money out of your paycheck. Sorry, I forgot the word. Uh, I wonder how many people are actually doing their family budget to a point where they're actually taking the leftovers and sending it into the brokerage. You know, I know people obviously invest windfalls when they get that, but how many people are disciplined enough? That's the great thing about the silver and gold is, is when you buy it, it's that forced savings. I love that aspect of it. I don't know, just food for thought. I just wonder, uh, you know, people know the value of it. People know the value has gone up. People that see it find it beautiful, and yet they don't take that extra step. There's that missing link. 
And, uh, you know, is it, I, I'm not sure if it's just an American phenomenon, but I know that obviously uh, it's seen a lot different in, uh, in China and India. You know, people uh, see these we buy gold places everywhere. So it's, it's, it's on people's mind. You, you can't help but have it on your mind, and yet they don't pull that trigger. I find it fascinating. All right, guys. Talk to you later.